What's up friends? Today we're going to talk about testing your ketones and glucose and the importance of testing and all the different testing modalities that are available commercially at present. So on this side right here, we have breath acetone meters. I'll talk about what acetone is and how it's metabolized and what it may mean. Over here, we have some of the most popular commercially available blood glucose and ketone meters. And so we're gonna talk about the differences. I've been testing my glucose for over six years now. I've been testing ketones since 2014. And I'm not an expert by any means, but I've spent a lot of time going back and forth with these different things. And I just wanna help you better understand, you know, when to use these different you know, modalities, which one you might wanna get, the pros and cons, because I don't think there's any one way to test that's the end all be all. You know, it all comes down to what your preferences are. If you don't like to prick your finger, then you might wanna, you know, try one of the breath acetone meters. Are they perfect? No, because they don't also look at blood glucose and that. So uh, anyway, we're gonna unpack that. I'm Mike Mutzel, thank you so much for being here. If at any time you like this content, if at any time you think that you might wanna learn more about nutritional ketosis, intermittent fasting, and longevity metabolism, you might wanna hit that like button and definitely subscribe so that you get updated when we launch new videos like this. So let's dive into it and first talk a little bit more about ketone metabolism so you have a better idea about what specifically you're testing. In the context of fasting, of eating a low carb ketogenic diet or exercising, what happens is your glucose goes down your insulin is low because glucose is low and glucagon increases. That simultaneously causes two main processes. The release of fatty acids from your stored adipocytes, your fat cells, those go to your liver and the various hepatic ketogenic synthesizing enzymes are increased, which cause the formation of ketone bodies from all these free fatty acids being released from your fat tissue. So what we have in terms of the metabolism and how these things are created is acetoacetate is made first and then it goes to beta hydroxybutyrate, which is what you're testing in your blood, and then beta hydroxybutyrate can spontaneously combust into acetone, which is what you're testing here with the breath acetone meters. So let's talk about those first because I think that they're pretty interesting. Not too many people that I know are regularly using breath acetone testing. Um, I found them to be pretty effective because you can test in real time very quickly. Uh, the, the downside to the blood beta hydroxybutyrate testing is you have these test strips which can run from anywhere from 50 cents to two dollars per test strip and that can get expensive so serial testing can cost five ten dollars a day and the cool thing about the initial investment once you purchase you know a breath acetone meter and i'm not partial to any one of these right here we have the level app which is really unique it does take some calibration so you have to be uh, how should I say, you have to be on it, so to speak, because you're, every month you have to recalibrate the sensor. I think the sensor compared to these other ones, from what I understand, is very accurate, but you need to calibrate it and so that it has the tight ranges. Uh, it does plug into your wall, so it's not plugged in right now. I've had this for about a year and a half. It's really cool. So I've had friends over before we have dinner or before we have a glass of wine, we'll test our breath acetone levels and you know talk about it and things like that. That's pretty neat. Um, this is a new app called getketo.com and I found this to be very accurate and very quick. And so it syncs with your Bluetooth on the phone and I actually just broke a 42 hour fast. And so this will be super interesting and we'll just do a real time test right now. I have no idea where it's going to be, but I was at seven parts per million this morning, which is pretty high. That's in considered deep ketosis. But I, what you do is you just turn on the Bluetooth in your phone, you get the, open the app and hit the button on here and it has to calibrate. So while it's calibrating, I'll just you know talk a little bit more about it. Here's what I find really fascinating about testing the breath acetone is particularly after prolonged or intense exercise or prolonged fasting, I, I would say put that in around 36 hours or more is what I characterize prolonged fasting, is I find my breath acetone is elevated for a significant amount of time. And so that's what's really interesting is, is the ketone bodies in the blood I have found can, they can fluctuate quite a bit, but the breath acetone is elevated for at least a day or two after a prolonged fast. And so I think that's pretty interesting. The other one, and this is made by a great gentleman, I think he's in Sweden, Michelle, really nice guy, uh, the Ketonics. He's been doing this for a, a very, very long time. So I've, I have multiple iterations of that. Um, he, and he does now have a new battery operated one that's very small like this. So again, the, the pros of this, travel friendly, you can do serial testing, after the initial investment of say $250 or you know, $200, something along those lines, there's no associated cost uh, after that point. 
So you make you know the upfront you know investment, and you can test your ketones serially without having to spend a lot of money. So that's the advantage there. Kind of the disadvantage is you can't really t test blood glucose with this. You have to buy another meter, and that's the advantage of the beta hydroxybutyrate. You know, blood meters is most of these will also test blood glucose at the same time. So you can have your glucose test strips, you can have your ketone test strips, and so you can test your glucose and ketones together, which I think is very important. And we're almost at 100% here, Sam, so we'll do the uh, breath acetone testing on myself real quick. Okay, here we go. So you notice I didn't take a big breath beforehand, I just took a normal breath. Um, so it's still at seven. So that's pretty interesting. So again, this is just showing the power of fasting for really releasing a lot of fat from your adipocytes and, and sending those fatty acids to be synthesized into ketone bodies in your liver. So uh, pretty interesting. That's what I find and, and uh, you know, I, we could test my glucose and ketones here. Um, I'm gonna say this, I'm not gonna share it. So what's cool about this app, if you want, you can share it and stuff like that. But the, the app um, enables you to kind of track um, serial measurements and stuff like that. So uh, they're a new company. I'll put links below. We do have a promo code HIH where you can save 20% off on, on this app. So just to summarize with breath, breath acetone, you, you pay once and you can use it multiple times. Uh, again, the only kind of downside is we don't have a lot of really good reference ranges uh, compared to blood beta hydroxybutyrate where we know that blood millimolar ketone levels beta hydroxybutyrate over 0.5 is indicative of mild nutritional ketosis, right? Um, what do we know in terms of parts per million? There's not a lot of good data coming out. Uh, maybe it's emerging, but we don't have a lot of good science there. But again, you can kind of figure out where your body is. How is your, how are your breath acetone levels on fasting? How are they after, you know, carbohydrates? How are they after uh, a low carb keto day exercise, all that stuff. Uh, so let's come over here and talk about all the different ways you know, one of the cheapest ways, one of the most affordable, cost-effective thing that you can do right now is just go to Walgreens or Rite Aid, and if you only have 29 or 30 bucks, you can get a, a blood glucometer. So you can test your blood glucose. If you're on a budget, that's the best place to start because you can make triangulations or you can make inferences from your blood glucose. If your blood glucose is high, Suffice it to say, your body's probably not making ketones, right? Because the recipe to make these ketones are low glucose, low insulin, high glucagon. So if your post-meal glucose levels are high, you're probably not gonna be in, in ketosis in the post-meal window, at least in that you know, two to three hour period. It might crank up way long after the post-meal window, say 10, 12 hours. So you can start testing your blood glucose. That's what I did in 2013. Um, if you want to step it up a little bit, you can get a continuous glucose monitor. Uh, one little hack is you can go to your doctor and you can just, don't tell them that I told you this, but you can just say that, hey, look, I'm concerned about developing type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes runs in my family, and that's maybe a white lie, but we're, as human beings, we're all susceptible to developing type 2 diabetes, so that's not really lying, so to speak, and, and uh, insulin resistance is so prevalent now. They can write you a script for a, a continuous glucose monitor. The Dexcom is a little bit more accurate than the Abbott Freestyle Libre, but it's a lot more expensive as well. We have other videos where I've worn the continuous glucose monitor that I can link to. Uh, this is a, a wonderful way to just see how your lifestyle factors are affecting your blood sugar responses and would also then affect your ketone responses. I found for me, my diet didn't really move the needle much because I've been eating low carb and paleo since 2006. But what for me, sleep and stress management were huge. Uh, when I would travel, I get a lot of, I can get stressed out pretty easily in traffic and travel, waiting in lines, I really can be impatient. I don't like waiting. And so that skyrocketed my blood glucose uh, to alarming levels. So for me now, I do a lot of things to uh, improve my body's parasympathetic tone, meditate, breathe, breath work, and so forth. Um, now, the uh, Abbott Precision Extra was one of the first combination glucose and ketone meters that, that was available. It's a little expensive. The strips are available online. The one thing that I do like about the strips is they come in sealed packages like this. Now, you're going to find that the accuracy of meters that deliver strips and sealed packages, whether it's ketone strips like the Keto Coach or Precision Extra um, and so forth, 
they're a lot more accurate. So these strips are very sensitive to moisture. Just like with probiotics, just like with different dietary supplements, moisture is your enemy with both supplements and test strips. So I know it seems like a little bit more waste. They're not as environmentally friendly, but if you wanna get accurate readings, you wanna make sure that the strips come in these you know, uh, moisture controlled packaging delivery systems. And that's what brings me to my next point with the Keto Mojo device is I found that this is, uh, I don't wanna, I think they're a great company. I think what they're doing is awesome but the strips come in these packages and they're not necessarily moisture controlled. And so I, I do see a little bit more variability here. Um, and so after testing ketone levels with the Keto Coach, Precision Extra, and this, I find ketones are always, I would say a few standard deviations higher on the Keto Mojo app compared to the other meters. So someone is off, I don't know who it is, but just keep that in mind. Um, again, what's cool about this device though is it has a Bluetooth connector, okay? So you can sync it with your phone. Uh, it has integration to other health monitoring apps and, and stuff like that where you can aggregate all your health data. And it also is a simultaneous blood glucose and blood ketone uh, testing device. So there's a lot of pros there. The, the only cons that I would say is you wanna make sure that you keep your test strips away from moisture. So you don't wanna put these near the sink or where you're cooking. Maybe even you put them in a little case with some sil silica desiccants or salt to make sure that moisture doesn't damage or affect the strips because again, moisture um, can be a major problem here. Now, last but certainly not least is the Keto Coach. And what I like about this is they sell you the strips in these sealed packages, which is really cool. And our buddy Goody Beats, he's on YouTube, Logan, um, he was involved in the creation of this. And so super accurate. Um, they are now, to my knowledge, only testing beta-hydroxybutyrate in the blood, but I think they'll add uh, blood glucose over time. So what do I personally recommend? Well, I, I think it starts with your budget. You know, if you're balling on a budget, so to speak, what I would do is just get the cheapest blood glucose meter you can, and maybe get one of the breath acetone meters to get a good baseline so you can serially test. If you have a little bit more resources, a little bit more money, I would get one of these app, one of these meters where that tests also blood glucose and ketones together. Um, you know, the cool thing about the Keto Coach is the affordability of the test strips. Okay, so if you're doing multiple testing, and I'll get into when you should test and so forth, uh, this is going to be the most affordable way to test your ketones. The Precision Extra, what I don't like about what Abbott is doing is they're seeing it's just supply demand. There's a huge demand, and so they're marketing up the test strips, so they're super expensive. And the Keto Mojo is cool, but you just gotta make sure that you keep the test strips in a, in a kind of you know, humidity controlled environment. So that's, this is what I personally do. I'm, I'm going back and forth. I'm, I'm not biased here and saying this is the best one or that's the best one. Um, I, I think you gotta talk with these companies and you know, see what kind of promotional deals they, they have going on. Uh, I'm sure with Black Friday and the holidays coming up, you can save there. But what I personally like to do is test my glucose and ketones at the same time. And here's why I like to do this, because we know that the metabolic environment to get glucose down and ketones high suggests that we have low glucose, high glucagon, and probably elevated levels of autophagy. Now, as you know, autophagy is this intracellular phenomenon that we can't directly measure in systemic circulation. We have to triangulate, and that's where I think it's important to ensure that, particularly when we're coming off a fast, to look at our glucose levels in relation to our ketone levels. So that's what I like to do. And so you can do that by with a cheap glucose meter and breath acetone meter or one of these meters here. It just depends on kind of where you're at. And um, if you have kids or a spouse that's doing keto with you, it might, might make more sense to do breath acetone and then one of these for glucose testing. You know, when people ask me, what's the best way to fast? It's like, there's so many different ways to go about doing it. You have to figure out what's in your budget. I'm just trying to let you know, here are the options. And all these folks support the movement. A lot of, you know, Level, for example, Ketonics, they're at every seminar. They're great people. They're helping to support education. So I think you just gotta figure out what's the best, you know, in terms of your finances, who you have a relationship with, and then we'll finish off on when you should test. And so this is a question that so many people ask. When do I test my blood ketones? Well, it's like saying, you know, when should I meditate? Well, I don't know. But it, you know, do you get stressed out when you come home after a long day? Are you stressed out, you know, in a car traffic wise? What I suggest is getting a baseline first thing in the morning to see where your metabolism is at. And then I like to tell people to just test a regular meal that they would normally eat. If you're eating one meal a day, test your blood ketones and glucose before the meal, 30 minutes after eating, 90 minutes after eating and then 120 minutes, two hours after eating and see where things are at. 
So you kind of stress the system because type 2 diabetes doesn't start when we're fasting. Type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance and hypertension and all these things occur in the post-meal window. So I do suggest testing shortly after a meal, 30 minutes after a meal, 90 minutes after a meal, and two hours after the meal. And so that's when we really should be testing. And then also I like to have people test after exercise just to get an idea about how their body is responding to exercise. And it's, it's pretty interesting what exercise does to your blood glucose. It drops it like a rock. And what you'll see is, although it does transiently induce an increase in blood glucose in the post-exercise window, you're gonna see a, a big suppression afterwards and then a concomitant increase in ketones, which is really cool. So I know I'm a little long-winded on this video. I apologize for the length, but just wanted to share with you the results of this. And I think it's important that we all kind of custom tailor this and figure out you know, what suits our needs. I'll tell you what I do when I travel. I just bring the breath acetone meter with me now just because it's easy, it's convenient. I used to travel with the Keto Coach and the Keto Mojo. And I, I like, again, like these products, but I found it, you know, if I'm in an airport or if I'm testing and, and it's just pricking my finger on the road, I was like, what bugs am I getting exposed to and all that. I don't use ethanol, or, you know, uh, rubbing alcohol on my hands. I just go ahead and straight up test. Um, but I just found this to be kind of cool. And again, it's new uh, for me at least. And so I'm tinkering with it. But I encourage you to try all these different things and to get a good idea. Every little tool that you test and tinker with and the more that you understand the body, the more that you can kind of custom tailor the things that you eat, your feeding patterns, your meal patterns, your fasting patterns, your sleep, all that. And I think it's really great. And I think this is why so many people are getting benefits from the ketogenic diet is for the first time in their life, they're starting to test with these different tools to figure out what foods, what exercise programs, what feeding patterns are influencing their body's physiology, which is really exciting. So, Thank you so much for continuing all the way through. I'm glad that you're still here. If you like this content, please hit that like button. I will be following the comment bar below to see what you find most indicative or important in terms of your biological testing. But above all else, what I don't want you to do is say, you know what, I went to my doctor once last year and he said my glucose levels and hemoglobin A1C is fine, so I'm no longer gonna test. I think that's a mistake because this is a one snapshot in time of your entire you know, life. And we need to start taking multiple snapshots. So we have a better idea about how food, stress management, sleep patterns, and everything is influencing your physiology. So we'll catch you on another video. Thanks for being here, guys. Talk to you soon.